Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, you may want to reevaluate your life choices. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. Today's video, we're taking a look at the stuntastic classic Gravekeepers. That's right, you're going to take this deck, you're going to rock up at your locals, and you're going to ruin someone's day. Gravekeepers is fantastic in that it can now be run on a budget, whereas before that was a little bit more difficult to do so, and we have a budget variant for you here today. Now, there are definitely cards that you can put in to improve it that aren't very budget friendly, and I'll make a note of those towards the end of the video so you can take a look and get some ideas. Maybe if you've got access to some of these staples or some of these other good cards, strategies that you can employ into this deck. Again, the aim of the game with this deck, of course, as we all know with the classic tactic, is lock the opponent out of the graveyard, and then there's all these tons of other floodgates of bullshit effects that we can slap on top and make this deck a formidable force. You can also bet that this is the kind of deck your opponent is absolutely not going to be prepared to play against. So the surprise factor is definitely something that you can employ to your advantage. Now, if you are watching today's video and you're feeling inspired and you like to pick some Yu-Gi-Oh! or even some Pokemon singles for that matter, you should check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store. And if you go ahead and use that, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Okay, so before we get started, let me first apologize if you can hear a whirring sound in the background. My fans go absolutely mental whenever I start recording stuff, uh, and the result is that. So hopefully we can edit that all out uh, in the video before it goes up, and you won't have to put up with that nonsense. Let me also apologize if there are any crazy noises in the background. I do occasionally live in the world's noisiest house, and today seems to be one of those days. So, again, apologies about that. But, anyway, enough waffling on for me. Let's get stuck into what we're here for. So, just a brief note quickly on this. The uh, the side deck here is, of course, not an actual side deck. Uh, we're going to detail about what these are. These are basically just cards you could consider running. And I'll talk about those in more detail towards the end of the video. The extra deck as well. There's an awful lot in here that is basically just a case of whatever you like. Uh, there's one or two cards I think are mandatory in here. Uh, and one or two cards I've picked based on the text that I'm running in the main deck. But honestly, about five of these cards actually really matter, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but we'll get, again, we'll go into detail about those a little bit later on. So let's have a look through the main deck. Uh, so of course, Gravekeepers, the intention here is just to try and stun our opponent and stop them playing. Of course, we hope to go first, but that doesn't always work out. So we have some contingency plans for if that doesn't happen. So we start off with Triple Commandant. Of course, this just searches your Necrovalley, so that's pretty self-explanatory. We've got triple copies of Spiritualist. Getting into your Supernaturalist is one of the ways that you're basically going to actually have a chance of winning this. Uh, to be quite honest with you, if you can if you can set it up with like one other Floodgate, you actually are in a really good position. It's very rare you'll lose from there, uh, from my experience at least. So, of course, you want to turbo into that fusion as quickly as possible, and Spiritualist is just going to help you get there. We have double copies of Descendant. Descendant is one of those that's just really good for a bit of spot removal. Uh, being able to get this out can just get rid of problematic cards in the field and go off from there. It doesn't really do a whole lot else for you, but of course it's just a Gravekeeper as well in name. Uh, and yeah, all of that good stuff. We then have double copies of Recruiter. Of course, this can basically just cheer out whatever you need to get onto the field uh, to go about your plays in the following turns. Usually, if you're in a bad situation, you can set this and uh, basically pass turn or whatever and then go from there. It's also the fact that when it's sent to the graveyard, so of course, if you link off with it or you fusion with it, you get that benefit as well. We then have Headman. I've just gone for two copies here. You could up this to a third if you really wanted to. This is really good for recurring your Spiritualist and being able to go about your fusion plays from there. But of course, it can get out stuff like your Descendant, which you can obviously just tribute off and, and go from there. We have a single copy of Artifact Scythe. I think this is a card that people have slept on uh, a little bit. It's it's a really nice addition to this deck. If you can, you can fit Trap Trick in here as well and then make this even more consistent. Uh, it's one of those cards, if you see it early on, it's great. If not, it's not the end of the world. Honestly, though, your opponent is usually going to start yeeting you with back row after game one. So uh, this is not a bad card to be able to set in your back row if you really do hard draw it. Obviously, it's not ideal, but, you know, it can come up. But otherwise, of course, this can just end the turns of players who aren't well ready for it. And of course, that's the intention of any kind of stun deck. 
We've got triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, still the strongest hand trap in the game, quite frankly. Certainly the most diverse, and this deck does need some ways to be able to play. Uh, it's pretty slow, so you want to be able to interrupt your opponent and give yourself a chance to keep going, especially if you don't go first. So cards like Ash Blossom can just help you get there, and it does have the side benefit of being a tuner, which can come up depending on what you use in your extra deck. And then we've got triple copies of Nibiru. Uh, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. If you go second, it's just... a. <laughs> It's a free win against certain decks, especially if they're not prepped for it or if they don't expect it. Uh, this can obviously just ruin your opponent's life. With then our triple gobbies and Necro Valley thrown, uh, it's Rota and it also allows you to get an extra normal summon, which in this deck can be really, really crucial. This deck does have a problem with not being able to get enough special summons on board, not being able to go through enough materials, which is why your extra deck doesn't come up all that often. But this can obviously just help you get a little bit further over the line. We have a single copy of Gravekeeper Steely. This is just to be able to add back cards so that you can go about your plays again. It's just recurrence. The unfortunate thing is that, of course, if you have this in your hand, turn one, it's usually pretty dead, so you don't want to see it straight away. That's part of the reason we're only running the one copy. We have a single copy of Hidden Temples of Necro Valley. This is another really good way of just stunning your opponent out of being able to play. But again, it's another card that could be a little bit cloggy. It has the same issue that a lot of Gravekeeper's cards have in that they require a Necro Valley and a Gravekeeper on the field to be of any use. And as such, it can be a bit of a brick. So it's one of those cards you really just don't want to see all of the time. It's a card that you want to be able to either search or dig into or what have you. So just one copy is perfectly fine if your opponent outs a day out. But a lot of the time, they're not going to be able to. We have triple copies of Necro Valley. Uh, well, we're playing Gravekeepers, and this is the main reason. Let's be quite honest about this. Necro Valley is still an insane card, especially when your opponent isn't ready for it. It says it all when people are willing to just stick this in their side deck as a card to side into against certain decks, and that's always been the case over time, and nothing's really changed in that regard. Necro Valley, just as strong as it ever was, quite frankly, if not possibly even stronger. We have a single copy of Mystic Mine. This is divisive, but I don't really care. If you're playing a stun deck and you don't want to ruin your opponent's day, then I suggest you click out of this video now. Mystic Mine is going to ruin some days, so you absolutely need to main it. And quite a lot of the time, especially because people are playing quicker decks than you, if you go second and they don't have back row removal, which a lot of the time they won't, then this is a free win. You're just going to let your opponent deck out if they're not smart enough to scoop it up. And then after game one, you just side it out anyway if you really want to. Uh, and then your opponent will be on eggshells because they'll be worried about this coming up. And honestly, you can just stick other tricks up your sleeve. Um, but yeah, it can be a free win button in game one. So definitely just take those opportunities to win those games. If you lose game two, it doesn't matter. You're going first game three, then you're going to win anyway. A single copy of Terraforming, we're playing field spells, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Much the same for set rotation, of course you can give your opponent a Necro Valley, which can put them in a really, really troublesome position, because, well, they certainly don't want Necro Valley on their side of the field. We have Double or Nothing as another win condition in the deck, a lot of the time you can slap down Mystic Mine, pass turn until you get two level 4s on board, and then go in for the kill once you can get rid of Mystic Mine, of course. Which, given that we run other field spells, it's easy enough to get rid of, you just slap down your Necro Valley and go about your plays. Again, double or nothing, just want one copy in here, you really don't want to brick on this, there's no, it's not a it's not a situation where you want to run multiple copies. Just one is perfectly fine. Now we are running triple copies of Allure of Darkness in here. Of course, this is a budget variant of the deck. If you have access to them, I would highly recommend running Extravagance. And of course, that changes your entire extra deck. But in the meantime, we've got Allure of Darkness as a way of getting over the line. You do need to be able to add some speed to the deck because it really isn't the fastest deck in the world. So of course, Allure's will just help you get there. We have a single copy of Necro Valley Temple. This is just another way of keeping your Necro Valley on the field, being able to give yourself more advantage over your opponent, all of that good stuff. Necro Valley Temple is really, really cool, but again, it has the same issue of needing a Gravekeeper and Necro Valley on the field to be able to be activated, So, or rather to get the benefits of its effect. So it is one of those things where really you only just want to see this when you want to see it rather than having it in your hand from turn one. We are then running triple copies of Sanctum. This, of course, to search our Scythe. Uh, this package is absolutely fantastic. And, of course, if you get Trap Trick in there as well, you can see this more frequently. Honestly, I don't mind just having it like this. If your opponent destroys it, you can, of course pop other cards and all that good stuff so you don't need to worry about it in that respect so it's a decent enough card in its own right but of course being able to search out the scythe is the real benefit with this one and then finally for our main deck we're running double copies of dogmatica punishment because we really don't need the extra deck for the most part in here we might as well just run a card like this it's an incredibly powerful card of course not playing the entire engine does mean that it does have its downside so it's not quite as powerful as it would be in other scenarios but of course there are cards that you can dump into the grave that are beneficial that aren't necessarily going to be cucked by your necro valley altogether and of course it's a good bit of spot removal if your opponent isn't particularly ready for it 
And again, if you do decide to go down the trap trick route as well, this will be even easier to get out onto the field. So that runs off our main deck. The extra deck, again, is just pretty much a case of whatever you like. So we're running triple copies of Supernaturalist in here. This is honestly a must-have at three, in my opinion. You want to get this onto the field as quickly as possible. Uh, it's usually going to be a big beater. It's going to be able to search your stuff during every end phase. It's usually going to protect your Necrovalley. It's going to be protected itself. It's just a really, really slept on card. The reason that this card isn't more, seeing more players, of course, because it's in Gravekeepers and the deck itself is a little bit too slow for most formats, but it is fantastic for something like a locals pick. And, uh, Turbo and Out Supernaturalist is definitely the desirable outcome here. But running a single copy of Quintet Magician, you can actually make this in this deck. You can if you want run Magicalized Fusion, but of course there is the downside that Necrovalley will stop you from banishing. So you can only actually pull it off when Necrovalley isn't on the field. So that can be a bit oxymoronic in this deck. So just having this here as an option if you do have five different Gravekeepers in your hand can be absolutely hilarious to just nuke your opponent's board. And of course it's a big boy of nothing else so there is that to keep in mind. Running double copies of Enzis. This is of course for punishment. Being able to pop cards on the field. This isn't prevented by Necrovalley so that's always a nice touch. We've got Utopia Package here. This is of course for double or nothing. And then we've got Utopia Blitzkrieg, which I just accidentally deleted out of here. Uh, Utopia the Lightning should have been on here. I just fucking clicked it out, of course. Uh, and that's just for an overlay in case you can't get into double or nothing. You've got another option then. We've got a single copy of Baguska. If you can't do anything else, but you can get two fours on board, this can just stun your opponent, usually for a couple of turns, so you can see the cards that you need to see. This isn't always ideal, but it does give you a really good option to play a bit more defensively if you need to. We have a single copy of Gallant Granite. If you know you're up against a combo deck, of course, this can search in the Biru during turn one, or maybe even later game if you suspect your opponent's likely to go off. So that you've just got another layer of protection. Again, making a rank four in this deck is really not very difficult. We then move on to our synchros here. So we've got Black Rose Dragon. This is just a generic board wipe. And of course, sevens are usually what we're going to end up making. We've got Ancient Pixie Dragon. This does have that kind of side benefit of having interaction with field spells. So I guess keep that in mind. Obviously, ideally, we'd have Ancient Fairy Dragon, but it's not there for us. So I guess we'll have to settle for this. We have Wind Pegasus here. Of course, the effect can be a bit neutered by Necrovalley, but it can give you an option to play if your opponent does get rid of it. You've then got a way to interrupt your opponent until you can get your own Necrovalley back on board. Just an option that you can send off punishment. And then finally, we have a single copy of Psyframe Lord Omega. This is, again, just so you can dump it into the grave off punishment. And then if you do have a situation where you don't have your Necrovalley on board, you can recycle your resources using this. And then onto the cards that are sat in the side deck just to talk about. Of course, if you've got access to Extravagance, I would highly recommend running it. Because given that this is a budget profile, we've decided to opt not to use that in here. Much the same for Pot of Prosperity. More or less the same sort of thing. I think Extravagance is just way better, especially in this deck. Um, you want the draw power rather than searching one card out of six or however the fuck it works. You know what I mean. Zeus, because we run plenty of XE monsters in here, can be a really good way, again, of just wiping out your opponent's board. We have Trap Trick here, as alluded to earlier. Of course, Trap Trick can be absolutely fantastic in here if you can find the space. Royal Tribute is one of those cards I know a lot of people are probably going to question me not main decking. Honestly, a lot of the time dumping your, your opponent's stuff into the grave actually probably does them more favours than it does harm in the modern game, which is exactly why this is at three and nobody plays it. Now, if you do want to go a bit retro and you want to play it anyway, that's entirely up to you. But honestly, I don't think the deck is strong enough to warrant loading your opponent's grave for them and then getting punished for it later down the line once they get rid of Necrovalley. Super Poly in here. This is another fantastic card, but it does have its formats. It's just an option that you can put in there. And of course, we have the extra deck space if you do want to run this. Uh, and then, of course, you just need to find space in the main. And then finally, we have the Dragoon package. So if you want a stronger first turn play, if you've got access to this package, it's an absolutely fantastic option that you should definitely consider taking up. Dragoon is already strong enough. And of course, pairing this with other stun cards can just be absolutely brutal against your opponent. And that, my friends, is all for today's video. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far, hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe and the notification bell if you haven't already, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. In either of those scenarios, I don't mind either way. Thank you very much for making it this far. Now, it is worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content we do on the channel, although it is what we're doing primarily at the moment, due to the thing that's going on in the world that I can't mention without getting demonetized. 
However, when normal service resumes, we'll have the likes of locals vlogs, event vlogs when we can get out to those, combo tutorials, how to play videos, and all of that other good stuff is going to start working its way back into the fold over time. And if there's something you haven't seen on the channel that you would really like me to go ahead and do, maybe some decks you want me to cover, maybe some other ideas, go ahead and shoot them along. I do take the time to read as many of the comments as I possibly can. And alternatively, you can get me on just about every social media you can think of. Links down in the description. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Thank you very much for making it this far into the video. Once again, hopefully you've hit subscribe and the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.